Hello there, and welcome to 522's Shift Happens, science. It's a small word that encompasses a lot of things. A lot of things that we love here at 522 Productions. Now, none of us here are scientists ourselves, but we work with a lot of organizations that do a lot of science, from Golden Goose to the American Physical Society. Now, a lot of questions come up when you have to work with organizations like that, such as how do you truncate 30 plus years of research into a five minute video? Well, I brought on one of our best producers, Shannon Glassner, and one of our best creative directors, Kyle Finnegan, to tell me all about how they managed to do it. Let's go ahead and make shift happen. Shannon, Kyle, both of you uh, have been here at 522 for a pretty good long while now. And in that time, you guys have both been working on a lot of science-based videos, a lot of videos on scientific research from our Golden Gooses, about, uh, which are videos about people who have been doing scientific research for a long time, an award, uh, essentially, for uh, all the research that these people have been doing. And for those kinds of videos, you guys have to do research, you have to plan a lot, because a lot of these people are all over the country, and we have to travel to them to get these videos done. Uh, and there's a lot of sort of scripting and editing that has to get done for that. And I'd love to talk to you guys about the process behind that, you know, from sort of a start to finish kind of thing in a slightly truncated sort of podcast form, obviously. Uh, so how about this? How about you go start with how does it feel when you guys first jump into something like Golden Goose and they're like, hey, we want you to do these videos about these scientific professionals. What do you guys do first when you get these like names and scientific topics that you don't know shit about well first off uh science videos are like some of my favorite things uh to work on um i think they're so much fun especially you know scientists are always themselves just like digging for what's going on in the world and i feel like as a filmmaker i'm kind of like trying to do the same thing trying to figure out like truthful stories and just like when you put us together it's like match made in heaven um so they're always really fun I think Shannon is generally the first person that gets to talk to our clients about like their ideas and needs for the science stories that we get to tell. So maybe she's a good, good person to start that off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, for Golden Goose specifically, every summer is right around when we get that exciting email that, um, that they're ready and uh, that they have their participants and their awardees. Um, and so Kyle and I really look forward every summer to getting that. And it is like Christmas Day, Christmas in July, usually, um, where I get to let Kyle know that they're ready and we have information. Um, the first thing that I learn is actually what cities these awardees are located in. Um, at this point, the information is still under embargo um, that even us, we kind of don't know everything yet. Um, we might even know a little bit about the research topic, um, but typically all of the information comes after we sign the contract. So that's an interesting part of the sales process is just understanding the client, the awards, and trying to get as much information as we can to understand how we're going to film and how their story is rolling out. Um, one of the main things is sometimes we don't know how many people we're interviewing. Uh, we might know that there's a few people at the core of the research, but maybe we'll want to talk to a nominator um, or another colleague who can give another perspective. Um, so that's something that we typically try to figure out before we even get all of the research information. Yeah. And I think sometimes at that point we get like a little bit nosy where it's like, if we do know <laughs> Seattle and the person has worked on cars and computers, we're like, okay, what can we put together from that? Um, and I think like, even if we don't know who we're interviewing yet, we can like kind of get inspired. It's like, okay, well, mm -hmm. their research maybe deals with one thing like, okay, what's a, a movie that has cars in it or, mm -hmm. um, what sort of like new art styles are out there that are like, oh, this deals with like technology or like music that's inspired by this sort of research topic. So I think like, right. even from those little nuggets, we try to get going as quick as we can. So what you're telling me is that, like, even when putting together, like, say, a production package and, like, stuff like that, you don't necessarily know what you're getting into, like, in terms of, like, putting together, like, a mood board, do you think? Or, like, are you saying, I like, once the contract is signed, we know and then we get into it? Just about, wouldn't you say, Shannon? 
I would say that for this one, um, for Golden Goose, there's three awardee uh, like segments, three awards, um, but there could be multiple people, like I said, um, that contributed to the research. So we could be speaking to nine or 10 people or just three, um, but it comes kind of in waves where we'll do our pre-interviews okay. and that's really when we get connected to the participant, we set up time to talk to them, and that's when we start getting in all of this information. We get written documents, um, kind of outlining their research, and then we get to speak directly to them, and that helps us build the production package. So it definitely comes in waves, and we have to do it award by award. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. In terms of having to like do research on the topics that these people are studying and they are being awarded for, how much research do you have to do, especially like once you've talked to the person, you've done the pre-interviews and so you know that, but now you still need to like, okay, take that and then fit into like an edited video for them. How much research do you have to get done for that? Yeah, it's, uh, it really depends on, you know, what the topic is. I think there's, you know, I dropped the example of cars. You know, we, we worked on a science story that like involved uh, the computers that are in like everybody's car. And I think like at a certain level, like everybody knows how a car works. So for that, I feel like you can come in as like a baseline, like lay person, like what, what curiosity do you have about a car? But then once we have like these medical topics, it's like, oh, oh yeah. here's how this drug works on the endocrine system. And I'm like, so what's the endocrine system? <laughs> um, how do uh, pharmaceuticals work? And I, th I think like once you get those sort of topics, you have to get like try to get as smart as you can in a short amount of time because these people are yeah. going to be talking like way over your head. Yeah, there's a lot of times for me when we do the pre-interview and I'm trying to take notes and there's a lot of question marks on my page. I don't think I'm spelling <laughs> anything right. I don't think that I'm actually writing the word that they said. So then trying to go back and fill in the gaps and especially when they're talking about DNA and all of these nomenclatures that I just, I oh, yeah. don't know. And I definitely don't know how to spell. <laughs> so there's a lot of like nodding your head in the pre-interview and trying to get as much information as you can. And then when you have time being able to go back and fill that out and learn more. Yeah. yeah. There's something funny about eggheads, eggheads and the way that, that not to disparage people that we work with, of course, but like they don't even right. understand how much everybody else doesn't understand about what they do sometimes. You know, I think it does pay to come into these interviews a little bit dumb. I think like if you ask mm -hmm. dumb questions and you get smart answers, like nobody's going to know the questions that you asked. Um, so like kind of coming at it with a little bit of like gaps in your knowledge that you're eventually going to figure out by the end of the interview, I think mm -hmm. like pays off sometimes because you are like standing in as that like person totally outside of science. And we're trying to like condense their story into like a five minute video that anybody can understand. Um, it's definitely a challenge sometimes, but just like keeping in the back of your mind, like what is a person outside of this field going to want to know about this is mm -hmm. really useful. Yeah. The goal for these videos, um, too, just to remember is that we are explaining why the federal funding was crucial to the research that these people have done for years and years and years and how those grants were able to help them make these discoveries that led to X, Y, Z. And for us, the way that they use these videos is to try to convince Congress to continue the federal funding. And for that, you just you have to put it in clear terms. Um, not everyone in Congress is a scientist. I think we all know this. There might be excellent people <laughs> right. on their staff uh, that can help. But the videos are really a great way, um, not only for Congress, but for just everyone else, like Kyle said, you know, the normal lay person. Um, so it's hard. It's not hard. It's important for us to take the really detailed, high research oriented topics and conversations and dilute it down into something that is interesting and easy to digest within five minutes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. And I, I hope that everybody can connect with a good story and that if you can like find the heart of that science, like that, so that you're not just like vomiting information at somebody for five minutes, uh, yeah. like, that's not gonna convince anybody why it's important. Like, <laughs> finding interesting characters and like the story behind their research beyond just like what's printed in their papers has been a big part of the use. Absolutely. I've seen, you know, a couple of these videos that you guys have done thus far, and there's some that are like 
really, you know, they're like, oh, that really tugged on my heartstrings. I remember there was one I was watching. Uh, it was like you interviewed like a scientist's kids uh, about like, um, I can't remember what the bug was or if it was a bug. I feel like I'm crazy. I'm, tr- I'm trying to think of which one now and if, if it was us or before our time. It might have been before your time. There's a... Um, we did a snail last year. It might have been snails. I, I, I'm trying to like recall. There was, it was a... Well, in any case, I, I recall that uh, in a lot of the sort of videos you guys have done, you guys really sort of pulled at like what the importance of like the heart, exactly like you said, of like, why do they do these things? And it's not just, it, sometimes it is, you know, scientific curiosity, but sometimes it's a lot of yeah. like connection that these people have uh, to it. Like, obviously we're under embargo, so I can't say things about recent, but I've heard recent stories about the recent one that we're working on where I'm like, oh, that is pretty cute like that is it, like i get why this guy loves the thing that he loves you know what i'm saying and yeah. it's like that's <laughs> that was a good teaser i'm yeah. <laughs> keep, yeah. him, keep him hooked <laughs> right yeah pay yeah. attention yeah i would i would say a lot of feedback that we've received too is that emotional aspect to it of these researchers themselves their family their colleagues this is a majority of the time they've dedicated their whole life to this research. Um, mm-hmm, and maybe yeah. even their big serendipitous moment didn't happen until halfway through all their research or towards the end of their, their research career. And so for us to showcase all of the work and the dedication that has gone into it, it's like this living memory, living tribute to them. And I think that that's just something that they personally have been really thankful for. Um, and I'm really glad that we can kind of give them something that they can reference, you know, even beyond their time. That is just a living testament to all of the effort and all of the dedication um, and sacrifices that they've made along the way, just to show all of the great and wonderful things that it all led to. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. You know, a lot, a lot of, or like most of the time, these people aren't doing it for the glory, but to be able to like give them their time in the spotlight, uh, it does feel like really rewarding. And of course, we're focusing on Golden Goose specifically now, but there we work on other sort of science focused videos. Uh, yeah. Just for the sake of it, uh, do you guys like, let's say, uh, just pushing Golden Goose to the side, even though I know we love it. Uh, for the two of you, do you guys have like some science projects that we've worked on that you can talk about uh, that you're like, oh, this is my favorite. I loved working on this project. So you know, both of you can sort of go in turns. Yeah. Um, I could start so I could hopefully steal Shannon's too. Um, but we, I know you will. <laughs> we often, I mean, for a couple of years now have worked with the American Physical Society and, um, you know, we get to highlight three awardees for them the past couple of years. Um, and it's, it's so interesting working with physicists because their work a lot of times is just like, it's way before like the application of something they're working on, something that's like probably really abstract to the general public. Um, right. but has like paid dividends like down the line or has contributed to like our understanding of the universe. Right. Maybe it doesn't have like a application that you'd be able to see in your daily life, but they're still like contributing to, you know, understanding the world. Um, Standing on the and shoulders that's really... of giants. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That Those are really fun because it's uh, not necessarily working with something that we could see. You know, we're working with like, they're talking about black holes or stars or like something like that's, at an atomic level and just to, like to try to make that visual, I think is really fun. We're always mm-hmm. looking for interesting metaphors uh, to try to visualize what they're talking about um, and help us to understand what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I would re- encourage our viewers. Those are out, right? Those videos. Yep. Uh, yeah, yep. you know, uh, our viewers should, are, and our uh, listeners should absolutely go and check out uh, our American physical society sort of uh, videos. Cause those were fantastic. I mean, uh, it was amazing, like seeing the cool stuff that you guys were doing. That that was really good. Yeah, I like to say every every summer, every year, Kyle and I get a lot smarter in a lot of random <laughs> subject matter. <laughs> yep. Um, for me, I I also love the American Physical Society, but you know we don't repeat things here. Um, <laughs> one thing for me that I have I've always had a love for. Um, has been our Children's National Hospital videos that we've done. Um, And a lot of those are science focused, but on the medical side. Um, But what I really love is that behind every video we've done, there's an emotional story. There's real people 
that we've been able to talk to, to interview, and to just hear how Children's National helped them through probably the hardest times of their life. Um, one specifically is our cardiac surgery story that we've done. Um, we got to meet this family, um, and they had a lovely baby daughter. So cute. So cute. And what Children's National did is they, they had a prenatal diagnosis, and then they actually performed the cardiac surgery. And she's doing wonderful and healthy, and we got to shoot a lot of lovely family video for them. Um, and I just, again, I think my favorite side is just these personal aspects that we get to tell. The emotional mm -hmm. storytelling that we do, I think that is my favorite thing about all of the science videos. There's always yeah. something that we can pull out and really make it human because sometimes science yeah. to me is very like out there. I don't understand it. I don't get it. It's not my line of work. And so to right. be able to kind of bring it down and try to give everyone a connection to a video, I think is really awesome. I think at the heart of like all science is like, you know, the, the you know, working towards human good and stuff like that and general sort of human understanding, you know, there's a heart, there's a human heart uh, to everything science related. And so I think that's what's great about the things that you two do as like our main, basically our two science people. Um, I guess so. Like <laughs> uh, you guys go in and you find the heart uh, of all of our sort of videos, these the scientific videos. And it's like, that's, I mean, that's awesome. That's like one of my favorite parts. I love whenever uh, there's like a science video coming along, I'm like, ooh, I can't wait to see this because I know that Kyle and Shannon are going to like bust out something yeah. amazing. Yeah, no, it, it's been fun. I, I love to be able to put a face to the to the research that we've all benefited from. Um, we did two of of the back to back Golden Goose Awards. We did um, we interviewed four different uh, COVID uh, vaccine researchers, and mm -hmm. I think like two years ago now, the four of them together appeared on on the cover of Time Magazine, and I was like, wow! Like now everybody really gets to see like the people that have been behind this work because all of them were working for years, you know, before mm -hmm. anybody cared about coronaviruses. Um, and they like finally got their time in the sun and it was amazing to see. Yeah. I think that's definitely one of the coolest things that I've gotten to do at 522 is interview times people of the year. Like that <laughs> is, that's a headliner. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but I think that just goes to show that at 522, we really make the effort to be subject matter experts in whatever video, whatever field we're doing. And we say mm -hmm. it all the time. We say it through the sales process, through discovery. Like we are trying to learn as much as we can and be part of the brand or the company or the research. Like we want to understand because that's how we can make the best product for our clients. We can't just go in and not listen and not learn anything and turn out a good video. That's just not right. going to happen. Um, so making sure that we're accounting for these hours and putting in the time to learn everything, how their logos should animate, like that, all of these little things that you might not notice when you watch a video, it mm -hmm. all just makes the process seamless. And so that we can really help out our clients and be a true connected partner with them and try to be subject matter experts. We're not perfect but we damn try. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think a big part of it, and I hope that this is coming through is that like, we enjoy becoming these experts for a little while. Mm -hmm. We get to like spend six weeks in physics and then six weeks in biology. And you, you don't have to devote an entire career to it, but you get to like learn little nuggets here and it's super mm -hmm. fun. And we know so many cool things to talk about at dinner parties. Yeah. <laughs> we're great at, we're great at trivia. If anybody needs two people to, to jump in on their team. The fact that we haven't done like 522 like trivia team, like go to a bar and just like do that. I feel like you two would like crush it and everything. Oh, we should do that. I'm yeah, really right? competitive. <laughs> we, we need that though. Yeah, yeah, we need that competitive edge that Shannon brings to everything. Literally downstairs, yeah. uh, 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 I was we I had just vaguely reminisced about a previous sort of uh, fun day we had where we went and did like a competition, and like immediately Shannon brought up how she kicked like my team's ass. Like it could she could not keep herself from it. We She's were right, just though. so good, and again, Kyle and I were on a team. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was the mistake that, that we made. We shouldn't have put both of you on the same team. That was right. fucked up of us, I think. we had, The rest yeah. of us had no chance. 
Uh, <laughs> you start doing a draft. <laughs> start ranking. We need, a, we need a pyramid. A constant pyramid. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm trying to figure out what else you got else for us. I definitely want to... <laughs> yeah, right. I'm trying to figure out if there's something else I want to like dive into real quick. Uh, on science stuff. I mean, there's a lot of deep stuff that I think, you know, a layperson will uh, probably miss. You know, it's like the editing process. There's like, you know, like what kind of things. Because I'm sure, here's the other thing, actually. I, I did want to talk about this and I forgot. Is that I'm curious about like, in terms of the, obviously we have a sort of format that we do editing in. Rough cuts, then fine cuts, then final cuts, right? And then giving it to the client every time so they can double check it. And I'm curious about sort of how you guys try and like, because I'm sure with science stuff, there's a lot of technical stuff that we have to get right right because like the yep. worst thing that we could do is like put disinformation out into the world uh you know and yep. so what do you guys how do you guys work to try and make sure that you are putting in the correct information putting it in accurately and so the, when these scientists come in and like check out our videos and uh make sure that we're doing it okay that we don't we're not constantly having to like go like nope oopsie luckily the folks that we get to work with Usually there's someone on the other side who can kind of fact check us. Um, so I think it's com having conversations often with our clients or, um, you know, they're sending it to the scientists that we interviewed and like making sure that, like you said, we're not putting out some lie out there because it's easy to just like pull sound bites from like, oh, minute five of this interview plus minute 10 plus minute two, like to make a complete thought. When in reality, like those thoughts don't make any sense together, even if it's like a simpler way to say something, maybe we're leaving something out. Um, so definitely like leaning on the experts there to, to double check us. Yeah. Like I said, we're not perfect subject matter experts, but the important thing is that we ask those questions. We ask for diagrams, for graphics, for anything that can help us understand and most of the time our clients are more than happy to send us things the researchers themselves some even have written their own books and they're like here take a look at this <laughs> and that mm -hmm. yeah, is yeah, also really helpful just to have these guides um especially when we're talking graphics because we do include that that is a huge visual learning aspect to the videos that we try to add into everyone um you know, hearing all of these complex theories, it's hard to digest. Mm -hmm. And so if we can show an analogy, that's another thing. Um, we like to ask our researchers to give us an analogy, give us an example. Where do we see this in real life? Um, and I think that also yeah. helps the videos a lot. Yes. I'll drop another name. I, well, not a name, but like for a Golden Goose project, we were, we were interviewing like a Nobel Prize winner. And I was like asking her to explain something. And she like immediately pulled out a slinky and like put it on her arm. She's like, so it's kind of like this. And I think like a lot of the people that we were talk to, talking to, they're already great science communicators. So mm -hmm. like really listening to them when they try to explain um, is like a big help to those those graphics that Shannon mentioned and like distilling it down to something easy to understand. When we have created like a really successful video, you know, it's five minutes to explain 30 years of research sometimes that mm -hmm. hopefully it's like a good teaser for somebody else to learn more about the research. I don't think we're trying to encapsulate like every part of the story or every part of the research, but you know, they have papers out there and websites um, and other resources that people can learn like more in depth about their work. So hopefully we're getting other people curious enough about this science to like go out and learn themselves. Absolutely. I know that I've absolutely like seen these videos and gone like, mm -hmm. uh, and typed away on my computer to sort of look up some stuff and go like, that's weird. That's crazy. Uh, of course, I, I love science. I think that it's so cool. And I, I love learning all the, uh, you know, all these scientific facts. So that's absolutely uh, great uh, for me, uh, getting these little truncated little bites that lead me to more uh, yeah. to, to touch on uh, and yeah. things like that. Breadcrumbs uh, along yeah, the trail. Exactly. Uh, are there any other, you mentioned, of course, using analogies and like graphics as like, taking those analogies uh, and making it easy for like a layman to understand. Are there any other methods that you can think of just off the top of your head, just like that you guys try and utilize to like keep things a little simpler uh, for those of us that haven't been studying things for 30 years? I'm trying to think that's usually the big one. Every now and then it is rare, but we do get to see like some of the science in action for mm -hmm. a previous science video. We, 
got to talk to some folks who had been researching these uh, aquatic snails um, for decades. And they had like a snail on site uh, that we got to film as it was eating a fish. And so like, that's a really easy way to illustrate like what their research was about because we actually had the thing uh, mm -hmm. there in the lab. But that doesn't always happen so much. A lot of times the science is not very like visual naturally. Right. You know, try and visualize theoretical physics. Uh, yeah. <laughs> kind of hard. Yeah. I think that'll probably do us. Uh, thank you both of you so much for coming onto the podcast and talking to me about science videos and talking to me about all the stuff that we do. Uh, you guys are fantastic. The videos that you guys do are fantastic. Uh, do you guys have any final thoughts you want to share with our viewers uh, before I let you go? It's been great being here, Ahmed. Um, yeah, how about everybody listening go check out the videos that we've worked on? <laughs> absolutely. We'll try and link a few in the description, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having us on. I would say everyone can be a scientist, uh, but if you have any science videos that you need edited or shot or produced, We'd love to talk to you about it. It is one of our favorite things to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Always be plugging. Thank you, Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> Producer. Contact me, uh, S-G-L-A-S-S-N-E-R at 522productions.com. Yes. All right. All right. That's going to do it for us here at Shift Happens. We'll be signing off. Bye. Bye.